My boy Ryan. My boy Dylan. Hi, Zane. Yo, what's going on? You got the cover on it, though? Yeah, yeah. It's it. it. Oh, snap. for it. Alright, I'm gonna show the Jake Pollard story. Inside West Coast Custom, or WCC, in short, is among the most successful auto shows ever. However, they also have a fair share of behind-the-scenes secrets. Join us today as we open their closet and see what skeletons they have in there. Welcome back to Tuna No Crust. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome. Be sure to subscribe while you're here and hit that notification to stay informed of our future crusty content. And also, some of you may not know, but we have crusty gar guy and gal t-shirts and hoodies that are all 10% off right now. Just click the link in the description. Now, back to the video. But before we dive into the juicy secrets, let us tell you a little bit about the famously known show, Inside West Coast Customs. West Coast Customs has grown to be one of the top tier garages for the super popular custom vehicle industry. WCC is located in Burbank, California, and is mainly known for its highly successful show, Inside West Coast Customs. West Coast Customs CEO Ryan Friedlinghouse is exceptionally talented in the business. He's had his business cars on magazine covers by the age of 14 and later had ideas to transform the custom vehicle industry. The show is mainly known for taking the most ordinary, factory-made cars and turning them into truly unique customs. It takes pride in its ability to fit any customer's request and make it happen. But within that success lie several scenes behind the scenes that you might not be aware of, from unsatisfied workers to less-than-ideal results. And with that said, here are the top 10 deleted scenes from Inside West Coast Custom you need to see. At number 10, they were sued for underpaying their workers. In 2014, West Coast Customs was accused of not paying their employees, an accusation that later ended up in court. Yes, you heard me right. That's probably the most prominent known scandal WCC had faced. They had to deal with federal accusations that the company didn't pay their workers for overtime. When the Labor Department carried out their investigation, they realized that WCC paid most of their workers on a set salary when they should have been paid hourly and with overtime. Considering that the number of hours the job entails, that's a whole lot of overtime. And the case covers two years' worth of financial mismanagement. Ryan Friedlinghouse was caught red-handed and had to settle for over $150,000 in back pay, which was owed to low-level workers. Number 9. Some cars were returned unsafe. Inside West Coast Customs prides itself on getting the job done, so much so that anything less than perfections makes news. The guys at West Coast Custom are renowned for safety issues and with cars often highlighted as a cause for concern. If you've been following their story, then you know about the Pink G Wagon. Their work on internet celebrity Trish Paytas's Mercedes-Benz G550 generated the most excitement, in a bad way that is. The car, otherwise known as the G-Wagon, was handed to West Coast Customs after Paytas wanted a little more vigor. She had initially requested the team to paint the wagon pink, put Savorsky crystals in the headsets, the steering wheel, and the floor mats, and make it a little bit better. However, when the car was finished, the electronics no longer worked. There were no crystals in sight, and the car was basically unroadworthy. Lights not working. Windshield wipers were unreliable and display giving false readings, adding that there were repeated deadline pushbacks from the garage, who cited several reasons for not finishing the job on time. Clearly, even the talented people behind Inside West Coast Customs can be overwhelmed by their work volume. Number 8. They've been accused of treating their employees badly. Probably the biggest secret of all revolves around the accusations of employee mistreatment. Not only have West Coast Customs been accused of neglecting to pay their employees, but they've also been accused of treating their employees poorly too. That's right, Ryan Friedlinghouse has been referred to as a dictator by a number of ex-employees, once an employee of WCC, Marucio Hernandez, said he worked a regular shift of 10 to 12 hours a day, six days a week, without benefits or Social Security. The most important thing was deadlines. Workers sometimes stayed late and even overnight on certain projects. Imagine this. A man had to fight to be there when his baby was born and was called in the work the very next day. Number 7. They are notoriously slow. The no-job-is-too-big mentality of WCC has mostly served them well, but the workload has sometimes been too much, and the team is prone to taking on more jobs than they can actually deliver, with boss Ryan Fringlinghouse said to be too focused on money rather than the results. Their fame for being extremely slow, with cars often taking months and, in some cases, years to finish. There have been many complaints from the clients regarding late jobs and slow labor over the years. In fact, one particular client complained that the team continuously pushed back deadlines without giving them a clear or direct reason. Besides, the team went over budget, also a surprisingly common occurrence for a company that has achieved such fame. Number 6. They can be aggressive. 
Ryan has been accused of being a bit of a rude person over the years, with his primary focus being that of money and being seen with celebrities. He's reportedly been accused of treating his employees poorly for his own gain, with suggestions of withholding payment and increasing working hours. But that's not all. The WCC as a company has also been accused of aggressive sales tactics, especially when hunting for restoration jobs. And if that isn't bad enough, the team is also said to be very unapologetic when delivering on late deadlines and poor quality car customizations. One display replicated the facilities of West Coast Customs in Corona, California. Owner Ryan Friedlinghouse has taken that small business and turned it into very big business. Friedlinghouse gave SBTV.com a tour and agreed to explain to you how he made it happen. Number five, they've pulled publicity stunts for ratings. More than any other business, TV is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately model. A dip in ratings of any kind will force the hand of producers to shake things up a bit. And even highly successful shows like Inside West Coast Customs are not immune to that. Say what you want about Ryan Friedlinghouse, but he sure knows how to work the media. He's often been criticized concerning questionable dealings and generating publicity stunts to attract business. Seemingly taking a page out of Overholland's playbook, WCC worked with rapper Will I Am to stage a theft of the star $700,000 DeLorean. Will was told to pretend that the DeLorean had been stolen, only for the boys at West Coast Customs to swoop in and miraculously find it. Who knows? Maybe this would have gone over better if it wasn't an obviously painful setup. My company and what we really do, and it's kind of give a little, you know, a view of what my guys go through every day, but also let people have hands-on experience. Number four, some customs are poorly done. Take, for example, the Black Panther Lexus. As much as the WCC crew love to get creative, sometimes they just don't seem to pull it off. No matter how much hard work they put into a project, Marvel Studios requested the company to design a car from one of their latest blockbusters, Black Panther. So the team took the challenge and chose a Lexus LC500 as a base for the project. They decked the car in Black Panther references all over its paint job, with brand new technology and sparkly lights to match. Unfortunately, the car never really took off and was forgotten within about a week. We, I mean, we do suspension and, you know, all the exhaust components, all of the, the custom stuff that comes into the fabrication world. When you're shaving a door handle or you're chopping a top or you're widening a body, I mean, it's all done in the fabrication department. Number three, some cars needed extra work after the episode aired. Ryan Friedlinghouse might be lazy at times as well as slow, but that doesn't stop him from taking on a number of cars even when the shop obviously has no room. Never mind the workforce to take care of the vehicles. The constant backlog of work is known, but WCC also had another issue with it. The cars not always were road-ready when given back. Some vehicles also said to have taken longer than they actually showed on TV. Surprisingly, several cars have been finished off after the supposedly finished product aired on the show. What's more interesting is the fact that this is never shown on screen, with viewers given the impression that everything has been done and dusted during the show's weekly slot. There's also been issues like bad suspensions, poor brakes, and meters not working or showing the wrong information. Some parts are also installed to look good for the show, but are practically useless. Even though some of the problems are minor and easily fixable with a return visit, they still fly in the face of the excellent customer service WCC says they are committed to providing. Number two, some of the work is low quality. West Coast Customs is one of the most famous car customizing teams on the planet, they're known for their exceptional work. There's no doubting the extraordinary imaginations of some of their employees' creativeness, certainly on display for all to see. And on the contrary, sometimes the creative juices just don't quite reflect the quality of the work, with the garage often accused of shoddy customizations and restorations. In fact, several cars have been returned to the show, having been deemed as unroadworthy or, in extreme cases, unsafe. But that's not all. Some of their work has been considered weak when compared to others. Well, that's not really a good picture for the world-renowned company. Number 1. The Firefall Bus Incident As part of the marketing for the game company, Red 5 <laughs> Studios contracted WCC to build an enormous bus with a game room inside to tour around the country. And while the show made it seem like they delivered the work on time, not only did the company go over budget, but they were sluggish in the process and ended up being late. They extended deadlines repeatedly and ended up making the game company fail to deliver the Fireball bus for the 2012 Electronics Entertainment Expo. Essentially, wasting all that time and work because now the bus is abandoned in a garage somewhere. And we hope you enjoyed our video. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. And please give us a like and share the video. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our new uploads.
We value your feedback. Feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.